Well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here at UT and an absolute uh, delight to be part of uh, TEDx uh, UT. And this is one that when I was a student here, if I would have seen the future properly, of course, I would have known that we were going to be someday doing TEDx, that TED existed at all, that when we held things like TED events, uh, we were able to gather together in new parts of the campus that weren't here when I was a student and talk about things that had not been invented yet. But that's one of the coolest things about what starts here changes the world, which is the whole focus on um, theme of the University of Texas and, of course, of the whole world. About 100 yards from here at the most uh, was my freshman dorm room. And when I would go to class, uh, when I went to class, I did <laughs> at times, um, but it was also quite busy working, I would move between natural sciences and the business school back and forth. That's what most of my classes were. And most of my focus was um, how those two related to one another. Uh, my personal background, having grown up in, uh, in a laboratory environment with a father who was a, a very well-known pioneer in the fields of immunology and related, gave me access to, um, very fortunately, a lot of insight and knowledge that was unusual, to say the least, at a very young age in those years. It dawned on me fairly early on a few kind of truths that have stayed with me my whole life and certainly are more true today than ever before. Um, and, and, and part of that is that when you can sense that some very big things, some very profound changes are going to happen, two things seem to be true. One is that you tend to overestimate how fast those are going to happen, especially when you're a young rising student and you think that with just some hard work and some great research and uh, a little bit of luck, some of these profound things can happen at just in almost no time. But it turns out some of the most profound ones take a very, very long time. In fact, my rule of thumb is that it takes 20 to 40 years to have an overnight success. The other rule of thumb, on the other hand, is that no matter how profoundly powerful and big a lot of these visionary changes are that you think will happen and you underestimate how long that will take, they actually, when they occur, are vastly bigger and more powerful than you ever thought in your wildest dreams. Now, we have experienced that in many, many areas of our life. So looking back over the last 5, 10, 20, 40 years, we'll stop at that just to bracket it. Think about what's happened here. Our lives uh, and life in general has changed so dramatically in most areas. Um, and that includes fundamentals of just about everything in daily life, how we communicate, um, how we transport ourselves, uh, the tools that we use to leverage our knowledge. We are able to use platforms today that were inconceivable not very long ago. Inconceivable. We'd raise our kids and say, whatever you do, never, ever, no matter what, never get in a car with a stranger. Don't do it. Now you say, whatever you do, make sure you get in a car with a stranger and pay them. That's how you get around half the time. So we have gone from the inconceivable that you would do something to it's in inconceivable that you wouldn't in a pretty short order, right? And that has repeated itself over and over and over and over. So we have ride sharing. Uh, we are working towards uh, platforms that, that allow that to be applied in a sharing economy of, uh, across a vast range of other uses. It's true in uh, most consumer uh, applications. It's true in shopping. You look at uh, what Amazon and Alibaba and others have made available to billions of people in terms of availability and choices of consumer items, industrial items, driving prices down at, at the click 
of a finger on a smartphone, which is itself a platform that didn't exist until the mid-2000s. And all these things have changed, and change comes in layers. And so going to the smartphone example, the second you have this thing called an app store, and you have the ability to take a core device that turned what used to be very, very complicated, difficult to write software, which took years and cost millions and millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, into little pieces as they appear to the consumer. Those are called apps. And there's this thing called an app store. That wasn't there before. So, and, and all of a sudden, on top of that, you had new layers like geospatial um, uh, imaging and geolocation services like Google Maps and Apple Maps and others. And then on top of that, you have new layers. You have ride sharing. We're moving towards self-driving cars, self-driving cars. Now, when I was a student here, we would have thought that was pretty cool. Um, it just simply was inconceivable. Uh, again, now we're moving towards it would be inconceivable not to have that. Even in our financial world, in the financial world, in moving towards the ability to actually program ahead your financial life. You can lay out a map and a route. Where do I want to be in 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years? What do I have to do along the way? What's a recommended route? What would be the changes I should make in my portfolio? Um, what action should I take? What action should I not take? Um, how do I weigh the different likelihoods of these outcomes? You can do that when you map yourself to go somewhere. You set out a destination and a journey. You say, I'd like to get in this car. I'd like to go here. I'm driving. I'm walking. It's going to take 12 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours. Here's four alternate routes. Do you want to use most use of freeways, shortest route? What do you want? You have options. You're tr transporting yourself into the future, whether it's a few minutes or a few decades. Now, that is so cool. I, I never cease to be amazed and excited by how much has changed and how much we have uh, at our fingertips today that were, again, inconceivable not that long ago. But there's one huge problem to me in how we have advanced and how we have not advanced. And that is that the most important thing in our life, the most important thing, is our health. Everything else is secondary. You're only as happy as your unhealthiest parent, child, Self, friend, insert blank. Somebody's sick, if you're sick, if you have chronic conditions, if you have serious health issues or even mild health issues, you can barely see past that. You can barely see past that. Why? Because it can become all consuming. Or at a minimum, it's there in the background always. And yet, in our health, even despite phenomenal advancements in science and in engineering, in, uh, in biology, in, uh, in biotechnology, in genomics, um, in many fields that I've had the pleasure and honor to be deeply involved with for many, many decades, in some ways, in things that would have been in inconceivable to me, the student me here decades ago, including uh, being in a White House for uh, two terms appointed by President George W. Bush and have the opportunity to be uh, a significant advisor in major initiatives like the Human Genome Project, the, the National Nanotechnology Initiative, the Stem Cell Regenerative Medicine, and multiple other key parts of platforms that have profoundly led to advancements that should be able to change the outcomes of many aspects of our health. And yet, although very proud of what we've done in the world and proud and honored to have been part of some significant achievements, I, I cannot honestly say that I or any of us who've been involved with these fields have really succeeded all the way because our health has not, and our ability to treat it, uh, cure things, and map ourselves towards cure has not kept up with what we've done in all these other facets of our life that are at our fingertips. I can summon a car to pick me up. I can pick where I want it to go. I can sort between four routes. Same thing with my Finances. I can't just summon a cure. I can't identify a problem, a health condition, be, be it something fairly mild, serious but mild, like asthma, um, diabetes, other conditions, even the flu, or a, a liver cancer, a lung cancer, um, a colorectal cancer, brain cancer, um, Alzheimer's, 
I can't just say, what is the destination that I'd like? Well, I'd like to have none of that. Oh, there seems to be an obstacle because you have it or someone has it. What's the route to a cure? No such thing. It's not there. We haven't done it. So that's the one thing to me, the most important thing in our life being health, that has got to change. And it's time to draw that line and say, uh, enough of that. Um, all of the hard work, all of the invention, innovation, and all these components of brilliant, um, insightful, incredible technologies and science from genomics to artificial intelligence to advanced edge computing, nanotechnology, cloud computing, every form of analytics, uh, every form of even gene editing capability and ad advancements in development of what we look at as drugs today has got to change. It simply has to change because it's, the truth is it's not working. It's not working. We spend, in the US alone, almost 20% of our GDP, $4 trillion a year on healthcare, and we haven't solved most of these major dilemmas. We can't even deal with the flu as it comes around every year and have an adequate working vaccine or insightfully understand which strain is going to hit. We, we are now at a point where, though, we have all the components that we need to build and deliver a new kind of platform for charting your path forward of not only your health as it projects out, but where you'd like it to be, what the destination is that we want to hit individually, collectively, ourselves, our families, our friends, our companies, our countries, the world. And that is what I'm focused on building, is that platform to take our life path and build the tools and technologies with a lot of other brilliant people and collaboration across the world. And let us do those things the same way with the level of ease and effectiveness that we have come to know in every other facet of our life. So in the next five to 10 years, I expect us to move into that overnight success that a lot of these things have been building up to in the last 20 to 40 years. It's time. Not only do we need it, not only should we demand it, not only should we expect it, but we can do this. I feel like many other colleagues that I know that having worked and lived through that many waves of these changes, the things that haven't worked, the things that have worked, the things that have taken a lot longer than we thought, the things that we thought might happen sooner, and actually realize it's time. And very excitedly, it's possible. So. Now, instead of it being inconceivable that we spend four to five hundred billion dollars a year on clinical trials with a 99 percent failure rate, that we spend almost four trillion dollars of the U.S. GDP, nine trillion dollars of the global GDP, and not cure most things that we need to cure, it is going to be inconceivable soon that we were stuck for decades without curing the level that we need to have to know how to take our lives and our health, live it, project it forward, and have the ability to manage towards an optimal state of health on an ongoing basis the way we manage our finances, our transportation, and many other aspects of our life. So I, for one, have never been more excited about the future, and I've never been more excited about the opportunity and the likelihood, in fact, I believe the certainty, that charting our life path forward, choosing our health destination, finding the route, using the tools and technologies to get there, individually and collectively, is just before us. And it's a stark contrast to where we've been, but that stark contrast we've now experienced over and over and over. It's time to do that with our health. Thank you.